Welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Evangelist Jordan Coletta with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B. Band. We're so blessed to have you join us this evening. We have a wonderful, wonderful show, some great folks to speak with and some great music. But one of the things we want to focus on tonight is we want to encourage you. You know, there's so much that goes on in our lives. We get busy with things. And, you know, I think sometimes it's just important for us to just sit down and say to ourselves, where are we in our faith walk? And more importantly, are we doing the things we need to be doing in this faith walk? And I think one of the things you're going to hear tonight is how the Lord wants us to understand loud and clear that He's got us. Sometimes He's preparing us. Sometimes He's nurturing us. Sometimes He's blessing us. Sometimes He's building us. At the end of the day, He's got us. And the real question is, will we have the faith to trust Him? And we'll, we'll focus on a, a little of that tonight. And with that, we're going to jump right into some great music. We've got Daryl Flesher Jr. And his first song is Your Great Name. Daryl, you're up. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, I'm so glad to be here. Hey, Atlanta Live, I came to encourage you that there's great power in the name of Jesus. Here we go. We love to call your name in something we cannot. Change holding me. I've got 
worship, 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 worship. Come on, wherever you are, you've got to understand that there's healing in the name. Your family coming together is in his name. Your bank account growing is in his name. So I need you to praise him. Let's go, let's go. We're going to do it one more time. And on this time, I need y'all to join in. And we just don't declare that there's victory. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. We'll have more awesome music here just shortly. But with that, we get a, an opportunity to sit down with someone who I think is just so faithful. Just when, 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 when I sit and talk with her, I, just, I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit coming from her, and it's such a blessing. With that, we have Apostle Michelle Sears. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. It's so great to have you. Thank you. You have so much going on, and I love the fact that, you know, when, when I talk with you, I know that there's only one thing that's important, and that is the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes, Amen? Amen. Amen. Nothing else um, can matter. You know, even when we go through our day-to-day -day and we take care of our family and things of that nature, yeah. But God still has to be in that number one spot mm. in order for everything else to flow freely. You know, and once I realized that and once I came into the realization that, girl, you can't do nothing without him, <laughs> <laughs> it, then it, it even made the hard times easier. If that even, that, that's a strange dichotomy. But in the hard times, with God, he makes it easier. Mm. You know, so even if you're still crying about it, just know he's sitting right there. You're through crying? Okay, let's move on. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but it takes time to learn that. It takes time to get into that, into that place with him. And I'm grateful that he's given me that, the, the grace yeah. to get into that place with him. Well, and, and it's such a mature, a mature path, you know, a discovery as you're uh -huh. walking this path of, of faith. What I love about that is it really helps, I think, all of us tonight focus on with all the stuff going on and, and, you know, kind of going down that road of I've got you, right, mm -hmm. trust. Right. Really what you're saying is, you know, there, there, there's a maturing, there's this process where the Lord will take us to a certain point and then exactly. you realize, oh, I've really changed a lot in terms of how yes. I perceive things. Right? Exactly, exactly. I remember um, when, you know, I, I heard about, you know, the thing that, that we're currently living through, the pandemic and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I heard about it as long as it was over there. <laughs> but then when it came over here, yeah. and that's what happens a lot of times, as long as it's over there, wherever there is, yeah. we know about it. Okay, God fix it. Okay, God help him. Okay, God pray, you know. But when it comes here, yeah. you know, and it has a way to find your house and you didn't give it your address, that's when you have to really, did I really have faith this whole time? Mm. What is my faith looking like now? You know, and so I remember in the beginning stages, you know, when everyone was going to the grocery store, it's so funny. I had made out my list like I normally do. I can find nothing in the grocery store. And I remember looking around like, did, did something happen? <laughs> because I knew of it, but I didn't know it. Yeah. And so everything I wanted that very first time, half of it I didn't have. And I went home and I was like, God, what in the world? And he made me this promise. He said, when you need it, I'll make sure it's there. Very nice. Because some of the things that I was looking for, and, and this is no nothing against anybody else, how you, know, oh. how you rock your house is how you rock your yeah. house. Um, but it taught me that I already had maybe five of what I was looking for. He was like, now when you run out of it, I'll make sure you have it. Mm. And he has never, even in, just in the simple things, bread, milk, whatever the case may be, when I needed it, when I truly needed it, as in there was none at the house, right. it was always there. And even in that simple thing, it stretched my faith. It stretched even more so that when God says, I've got you, he means just that. Yeah. And I think in this time, the word of God, it, it should hit us differently, if I can use that phrase. Mm. You know, a lot of times, you know, we've quoted the word 
and we believe the word. Yeah. But now that word has become a lie. You've really got to believe what you've been saying. Mm. You've got to really know that you know the, every word that you say or every word, every scripture that we say. You know, now unto him who's able. You know, in the midst of looking like, oh my God, doesn't look like you're able, but your word says, now unto him mm. who is able. And so those words just kind of leap off the pages to you now that we're, we're walking out that which we read. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know, that's, uh, I think for all of us, you know, when you, get, when you get to the point where things are out of control, like when you have things in control, and I think that's also another dimension of what mm -hmm. you're describing, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot easier, right? Because you've got the control of the pieces exactly. that you're concerned with and you've got to deal with today. Exactly. But when you walk up to that line and the things that you had control of, you no longer have control of, exactly. now is when you start either falling back on a secular right. belief or you say, hey, I'm all in and I will trust the Lord. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's when I think about in the Old Testament time, we put your, put the, your hand to the horns of the altar mm. and you got to hold on, mm. you know? And again, it's not that we don't believe what we see right. because it is real. Right. But our God is greater than what we see. Amen. You know? And when we fully get that, not only in our head space and not only coming out of the, our lips, when we get that in our heart and in our spirit, man, that's, right. that's when you're firm and say, no, my God is greater. Amen. You know, and because in, in this, if we've learned nothing else, is that, did we really trust God? Mm. And then if we can kind of grade our trust factor, surely it has grown in the last 18 months to two years. True. Surely it, it had to grow sure. in order for you to endure and keep moving and, 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 and keep believing and keep, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So it is something positive, I would say, that has come out of a negative thing. Yes. And so now as the body of Christ, we should be standing up. Mm -hmm. We should now be saying, all right, all right, we made it through, come on. And, and then be able to teach that to those who may still like, well, I'm not too sure. And, and if God is so good, why did he let this happen? You know, right. but now we should be a mighty army. Amen. Standing up and say, you know what? He was good from beginning to end. None of this took him by surprise. That's right. That's right. And actually, let's face it, you know, it's, it's easier for people to come to the Lord when things are tough. It's tough to come to the Lord sometimes when, when things tough. are exactly. easy. Um, and, and, you know, we think about it, I mean, there's, there's a goal here. There is a finish line to this world, right? Mm -hmm. One day we expect to be standing in judgment and we yes. pray that the Lord will say, job well done. Mm -hmm. Look, if it takes the pandemic to tune up our faith, exactly. the, at the end of the day, the goal, the goal is important. That the Lord says, man, job well done. You're here forever exactly. and ever and ever exactly. with me. Right? Exactly. Exactly. I've always said that God would do whatever it takes. Mm to get yeah. our attention. Interesting. He will do whatever it takes in order to snatch us and even to shake us, right. to remind us of who he is and what he said that he was, mm. you know? And God's word tells, he says, I, I cannot lie. Like, I cannot, I will not, you can't make me, mm. you know? Um, but I firmly believe that he'll do whatever it takes to grab our attention, He'll do whatever it takes for us to focus in on what it is he's trying to talk to us about in right. that moment. And not because he doesn't love it. It is because he does, he does love, love us. us. Mm -hmm. and, and he wants that goal. He wants to be able to say, well done, yeah. that good and faithful servant. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. He sent his only begotten son to die on a cross. You know that he's serious about saving souls. Exactly. <laughs> that and wasn't that, light duty. And, 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 and so that's what makes me believe he'll do whatever it takes. Mm. And I would say, too, I love this because on one end, whatever it takes in some instances could be preparation and all mm -hmm. that. But, of course, on the other side, it could be blessings, 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 right? It's not just a negative. It's, exactly. It's both sides. It's both it's, sides it's working the fair together. Parent. It, it's both, it goes, with the, and it says, and we know there you go. that all things, there you, go. you know, and we have to know. Mm. That, that, that's the key word, I believe, in that. Because when you say, and we know. See, if, if you don't know it, then the rest of it is just words. But when you say, and we know that all things, hmm, well, what about this? That's a part of all. Well, what about that? No, that's a part of all, too. You know? <laughs> um, and so 
I, I think of it as uh, when I look, when I look at that scripture, I think of it as, as biscuits. When my mother would make hand uh, um, homemade biscuits, yeah. each ingredient separately. Who wants to eat that? Right. Nobody's gonna eat that. That's not tasty. But I watch her put it together, and I watch her fold it together. It was laborious, you know, because you got to make sure it's mixed right and everything. And you got to roll. Oh my God, you got to roll it out, you know. But that end goal. That was some mighty good business. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and so I look at that, that all of that work produced that. And so that I believe that's what God does. All of the work that he puts inside of us mm -hmm. to pull out and put in, put in. Mm -hmm. so that we can stand and say, you know what? God did this. Because mm. if I had my way, we'd still be doing whatever it was we were doing. Yeah. You know? So there's purpose for why we got saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things I also would like to do tonight, mm -hmm. um, and I think your, your message is so uh, inspiring in my world, is like that's spot on what we need to be thinking about right now to, to trust God. I know you've got me. Let's let God handle that piece. And then mm -hmm. I, don't have to, I don't have to play God because I'm terrible at it anyhow. Terrible. Right? Me too. Um, but I'd like to, to, to talk a little bit too about you know, we're, we're getting closer to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And so preparing ourselves to have a great year next year, not that we necessarily should just think about the year as the only thing that drives us to right. get better in our faith walk. But, you know, I guess it's not a bad idea to think in terms of, you know, what are the things that we should be doing now mm -hmm. so that we hit the ground running into this next year that's coming up? So that word, preparation, uh, at our church, we're doing a study on the book of Nehemiah. Mm. And one of the things I love about Nehemiah, that he was busy doing something. And then he got word that, hey, something else needs your attention. Mm. And not only that he dropped what he was doing, he felt compelled to drop what he was doing to go back and build a temple. When I look at it, when we get down a lot of times to the last three months of the year, the fourth quarter, a lot of times what happened in the first nine months tips the balance or tips the scale as to how we treat the last 90 plus days. Okay. If we think that the first nine months were horrible and we think that it was just, oh, God, where are you? We have a tendency to skip over the last 90 plus days because we are in a hurry to nosedive into January 1 because think brand new year, new calendar, newness. But God still can do what he promised you in the first nine months and the last 90 some odd days. Amen. And a lot of businesses, what they do is when you get to the fourth quarter, you look and see what happened the first, the second, and the third. It's nothing personal. But if it didn't work in the first, the second, and the third, consequently you think it is not going to work in the fourth and you don't want to start a brand new year off on the wrong foot. Right. So they would do it, cut it away. Mm. That's when you have businesses that will uh, trim the budget. They will trim the workspace, trim the workforce, you know. And, and I've been through several of those where it looked like, but I didn't see what was on paper. Mm. And so what they did in the fourth quarter, they said, listen, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for all that you did. <laughs> but in order for us to start that first quarter right, we got to make some changes in this fourth quarter. So I would say to everybody, this is not the time to sit and just whittle away these last 90 days. This is where you need to get up, first of all, and realize you made it. Mm. You survived. Whatever it was and however it went down, you are still here on Friday, November the 6th. You're still here. And so you need to dust yourself off, get back, shake yourself. And you know what? I, go back to the journal that you wrote at the first of the year because he still has time. Mm. Don't count God out in these last 90 days. Don't count him out in this fourth quarter. Trust me, he still has a plan for your life. And if he promised it to you, he's a man that he cannot lie. But that's got to be probably one of the most enlightening <laughs> views because what it really says is your prep for next year is make a big Q4 work for you and, I, exactly. and don't pretend like or don't envision that it's over it's not it's Use never it's never over 
That is awesome. So we're going to run out of time, but okay. I don't want to run out of time without having people know how to get in touch with you. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, so our email address is impactlithonia at gmail.com. Our Facebook page is Impact Worship Center International. And I think that's all I have. <laughs> Give them one more time. <laughs> okay. E our email, impact, I-M-P-A-C-T, lithonia at gmail.com. And our church page on Facebook is Impact Worship Center International. I suspect we have people tonight listening and, and, and they're going to get, get more involved in some Amen. of the things you have going on with your church or just, just being able to plug into. Amen. You. Well, we welcome everyone. I, I believe that. I, I think that, you know, as we, as we think about where we are kind of in this, and you said it very well, coming out of kind of the, the you know, the, the, the climate, mm -hmm. the, the peak of, of the COVID thing and right. now getting hopefully beyond some of that. And we right. just gotta be careful and do the things sure. we need to do. But, but this idea of, okay, put that aside, put the busyness aside, put, let's go back and focus, focus on the faith that Jesus Christ has sitting right here in front of, right here. There's a exactly. whole lot more. If you've got a lot in here, there's a lot more out here. Exactly. Right? If you've got a little in here, you're gonna have even more out here. Exactly. And this idea that, that that the Lord wants us so successful, wants us to be living a life where he mm -hmm. looks at us and says, that was beyond belief. That was incredible. <laughs> and using the fourth quarter, as you've said, to really help prepare ourselves because we're successful in the fourth quarter instead yes. of just put it down, exactly. forget about it, we'll pick it up another day. It's exactly. the exact opposite. It's hit it harder. Come on, let's do it. Harder. Let's do it. Every day that you open your eyes, it's another day for you to do something great for the kingdom. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank for you for here. having me. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness, that was great. So with that, you know, it's, it's about Jesus Christ. It's about preparation. It's about anointment, anointing. It's about being plugged into the Lord. And with that, we're going to jump right back into some great music. We've got Daryl coming back up, Daryl Fletcher Jr. And his next song is going to be big. Daryl, you're up. Listen, they just talked about it. Don't count God out in these last 90 days. I'm declaring that the next thing that God has for you is going to be so big, it's going to blow your mind. You have to do something with me. I need you to declare this song with me, and we're just going to declare that this next thing God's going to do is going to be big. Y'all ready? Here we go. I believe. It's my season. Yeah. Yes, I believe. That it's my time. And it's your time. I can feel it. Yeah. Break loose in the room. It's yours if you want it. Said I might anticipate it. Say God. God's getting ready to move. Come on, let's sing the next part. Sing, for I know, for I know my God. My God yes, he is. His work He's working a miracle out for you. Let's go. Here we go. And it's going to be safe. Come on. I dare you to get up out of your seat, wherever you're watching, and declare this with me over your life, over your family. Say, it's going to be. About to blow your mind. Let's make this declaration. See, God's gonna say, He's gonna pour you out. Yes, sir. A blessing. It won't be room. Here we go, say, and it's gonna be everybody lift your voice with me. Say, Yeah. Here we go, say, God's gonna say, He's gonna open the windows of heaven. Blessing to you too. Yes, sir. Can even try it? Do big. Let's go. Everybody say that God's about to blow. God is about to blow my All right, y'all do me a favor. Repeat after me. Everybody say big. Said it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. It's gonna blow like your mind. Lord, we believe it. Your future is big. The next blessing is big, yes sir. God's promise is big. The new job will be big. 
The new house will be Your next way out will be Your next blessing will be Said it's gonna be, yeah Come on, say God's about to blow Yes, sir Come on, everybody say God's gonna say Said pour me out You gotta sing it out for yourself Say Let me hear you open up and say Listen, we gotta go, but before we go, do me a favor Come on, let me see you rock like this, come on Come on, let me see you rock like this, come on I see you, come on, rock like this, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Everybody see Y'all say, said I woke up this morning, I'm blessed Woke up this morning, I'm blessed Woke up this morning, I'm blessed And it's gonna be Do you believe it? Say Yes, sir hey. Said I woke up this morning, I'm blessed hey. It's gonna be so me And it's gonna be Oh my God, let me hear you say Yes, sir hey. One more time from the top, hey. say God's gonna say God's gonna open the window He's gonna pour you out Pour me now out Now somebody just blessing. begin to lift your hands and receive the big thing that God's getting ready to do for you and your family. Come on, somebody sing. God's about to blow my mind. God bless you. It's going to be big. Amen, amen, amen. That, Daryl, that was outstanding. Wow. Mm. So with that, we, uh, we'll hear more from Daryl, but um, we now get to jump into another great interview. We have uh, Pastor Frank Allen. Uh, he has so much going on, and he has a passion beyond passion for the homeless. And with that, thanks for being here tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks oh. for having me. My goodness, it's great having you. Right, right. So you, this is really interesting because you, you not only pastor, but you also, the Lord has called you on this special mission that you are, you said yes, and the rest is history. And nothing stops. You're like a, a million miles an hour. And with so, that, can you talk a little bit about what's going on? Oh, wow. <laughs> in your neck of the woods? I don't know where to begin, but I guess I'll start here. Um, I guess in 2003 here in Atlanta, uh, we started um, our feeding ministry. And I think that, I was going downtown trying to, I guess, um, persuade or mm. convince people that Jesus Christ was Lord. Amen. And when you're dealing with people that are homeless, it's kind of hard for them to see those kind of things. Yes. So I actually spent the night. I spent the night down there just, just to find out what was going on. And I don't know why I had that passion. It's just like me being here tonight. I got no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what God is doing. <laughs> the Lord knows, though. <laughs> but I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. But um, I went downtown, and we started feeding the people downtown. And it just turned into something that was just supernatural. And the hunger now is like every, every city that I go to, anybody that knows me, I'm starting a feeding program there. Uh, we, we ended up going to Galveston, Texas, um, 2011 through 2000, I think 16, 18. And we fed over 300,000 uh, after school kids. Oh my goodness. In about three years, 100,000 kids. Uh, 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 and, and that started out crazy too, because it was only one kid knocking on the back door because the church was across the street from a, a, a school, elementary mm. school. And the kids would come over and say, man, we sure are hungry, Pastor Frank. I'd be like, well, I got some cereal. <laughs> and I was giving them cereal at first. And all of a sudden, that turned into this big, long table that when the kids got out of school, they came right there and they ate. We're talking about kids that came from homes that didn't have parents, you know, double parents, that a mother and a father. Right. But they were, they were hungry and they needed, you know. So we were there to fill that gap. You know, some of those kids that were, that were hungry, that left school, because think about this. Kids go to school, I mean, basically all day. Mm -hmm. And at 11 o'clock, they eat, they, they eat lunch. After that, it's 4 o'clock, they're getting out of school, they're starving, mm -hmm. right? Time. So kids were leaving our, their school and going to stores and still and to eat, you know? Uh -huh. And one of the store owners came and said, Frank, thank you for doing what you're doing. I don't, I don't want to lock these kids up, but they're, they're trying to get food. But now you're feeding them. How many, what, what can I buy you? What can I help wow. you do stop, to help you do what you're doing? I'm telling you, God, from Atlanta to... Um, um, Galveston, Texas, to, to, to Houston, Texas, to Fort Worth, Texas, and now back here in Atlanta again. I've taken a whole big old circle, and I don't know what God's doing, but guess what? It's been a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, you know, when we were talking earlier, I love this picture that you had painted where, you know, even now you have, you'll have homeless at the table. Oh, my God. Then you'll have faculty. students, you'll have faculty, and it's so no longer just feeding the homeless. It's creating a community wow. and a dialogue around wow. just being faithful. Wow. D definitely. That, that is mind-blowing. I, I said to myself um, at the One Walnut Street building, it's actually the Excite Sports Arena that we use for services and also the feeding program, but I, I didn't expect faculty, students mm. to come eat at the same table. I mean, who wants to mingle with people that smell like something or whatever? They don't want to do that. But at this place, ain't no smells, man. <laughs> so I don't know what it is, but there's no smells. And with this, with this pandemic thing and all this stuff going on, people are so loving and so kind and so mm. giving. It is crazy. You know, I love seeing it. I just love seeing it. Well, I mean, I think what you see there, and I, and I know I'm, I'm preaching to the preacher, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not meaning to do that, <laughs> but it seems to me that, you know, what's, what, what's happening there is that the Lord is unfolding oh his God. love. He's just showing yeah. this is how yeah. it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter who you are. This is it, Come right? Me, yeah. I mean, here's Jesus Christ with his apostles, but fishermen and people off the street. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying this is it. We're That's about it. just being regular That's people, it. but being real with one another, with the love of God being Man. the center of that relationship. That's it. That's Amen? It. That's it. You know, I was telling a guy the other day that uh, my heart is this. You know, when I, when, I go to, when I go to set up for feeding, mm. like something pulls my heart. Mm. I mean, before I get there, I'm already there. You know what I'm saying? So something, something pulls my heart. And when I'm there, I told somebody yesterday, I think it was a few days ago, I said, you know what? I want to be that hand that gives the food to the person that's crying for some food. Mm. Is that like is that crazy or what? That's awesome. No, that's I want to be the hand. Hey, this is free. Don't cost you nothing. He paid for everything. You know. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I just, yeah. I just, I mean, yeah. It's amazing. I yeah, mean, what you're amazing. describing is how the Lord has blessed you. I mean, and you have. We're going to talk in a bit about some of the things that you do to help make this a reality with yeah. the Lord blessing you with the books that you've written. Definitely. Definitely. But I think, you know, what, what, what the Lord is really, I think, helping all of us to, uh, to really grasp is, is in each of our lives, he has a mission for us, yeah. right? He's got us. He's got, and he knows yeah. where he's taking yeah. us. He's, and we get to see what you, where he's taking you, where he's Man. giving you this. He's giving you a ministry, wow. but he's also giving you this incredible program that bring people to the oh table of the Lord oh and feed them and then get an opportunity to say a couple yeah. gentle words oh about God. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Every day there's salvation. Every day there's a testimony. Every day there's something that somebody just overcame. I had a guy the other day. He said, I was trying to figure out, was I going to put gas in my car? Wow. Or was I going to eat? Wow. I work every day, Frank, but I don't have the ends, you know, all the time to, you know, buy food. He's a single guy. Mm -hmm. He said, but to see this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday free, who does that? Mm. I said, big guy, it ain't me, it's him. <laughs> I'm just a vessel, you know, I hear what he say and I just go and do it. People always say, well, how'd this start? I, can't, I don't, to God be the glory. Amen. I get no credit for that because the big guy upstairs knows what he's doing. I laugh every time. I'm like, oh my God. There, when we first started doing it, there wasn't a budget. So it was like kind of whatever we, you know, we can do, we can do. Right. And um, I, w I walked in uh, Walmart one day and the lady said, hey, Frank, uh, Pastor Frank, um, I got a gift card for you. I'm like, what's that for? I know you've been trying to get grants, so on and so on, but I want to give you this gift card. It was a hundred dollar gift card. Oh, wow. You know, things like that. You know, God just provides. I believe that where he guides, he also provides. Right. I, I believe mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So to that degree, I want to talk a bit here about your books, but but right now, I mean, I think there could be individuals tonight listening. Say, well, I, I can't go downtown. Right. I can't personally right. do that and come help feed the right. homeless. But I could send a couple dollars yeah. and I yeah. could, you know, I think you just had a recently a donation of some yeah, food. Yeah, yeah, so a bunch of hot dogs. Like crazy. Hundred, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. The cases and cases of hot dogs. That's you know like 100,000 hot dogs? 100,000 hot dogs, That's yeah. That's incredible. So we'll be feeding for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but, if, but if someone tonight you know, wanted to either make a, a donation or, or I guess they could even, if they have time, they want to come help. But right. how, do, what's the best way for individuals listening tonight to mm -hmm. get in touch with you to do some of this stuff? Got you. Um, the email is uh, pastorfrankallen66 at gmail.com. Okay. You can email for information. We'll send you more information. Uh, you can call us at 
817-212-9937. That's 817-212-9937. Or you can go on our church website, which is actually a crack for salvation at yahoo.com. That will link you to the site. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's ways you can do it. So a couple, couple yeah. different ways. Yeah. Good, good, good. Now, let's take a few minutes. I want to talk about the books because the Lord is also, in addition to being a pastor, in addition to having this incredible feeding program and bringing people to the table of the Lord, which is really right, what's happening. Right, right. Um, the Lord has also given you, I think you're on your third, are you on your third book now? Fourth book, yeah. Fourth book. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that? Not only kind of what helped, guide you to write the books, mm -hmm. but also what these books represent, and we could have people tonight also wanting to get, yeah. get a hold of these yeah. books. Yeah. Um, the, the books were actually a tool, mm. and um, they're all short reads, 97, 120 pages, very short reads, but they're impacted with a whole lot of knowledge. I'm not talking about me. When I got, when I sat down and started to write, I used to be crying while I'm writing. While I'm, I'm like, I know I ain't said this. <laughs> this did not come from me. I'm not that intelligent. But anyway, it, it's some stuff in the book that's just like the book, How Long, Lord? Think about that. We all cry out, God, how much longer? Yeah, yeah. How much longer this pain? How much longer this not having a job? How much longer my relationship issues? We were all crying out. Mm -hmm. And the book is just basically saying, how long is it going to take you to reach out your hand and touch him? Mm. like the hem of his garments. All the power, all the blessings, all the things that we need are right there in his hem. Amen. You know, not the H-I-M, but the H-E-M anyway. But it's like everything we need is all in him. And we look for everything else and everybody else. And mm. you think about it, he's our last resort. Well, I guess, I guess I'll go to God now. <laughs> Try everything else. But man, seek him first. You know, that's all I got to say about that. But just seek him first. But the books, uh, How Long Lord, uh, it, 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 it's, I, was, I, was, I was catching a flight one day. And I saw a guy reading the book, you know, and I was like, that's a good, good read. That's a good book, huh? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, he didn't even see me. <laughs> and the Lord was like, Frank, that's it. I don't want nobody to see you. Oh, isn't I that want them to see me through, through what you, you do. Mm -hmm. Don't look for gratification from people. Let me be glorified. I'm like, wow. Taught me, you know, something big that day. I, I was just overwhelmed with God's presence at that moment because I realized it's not about us. If we take us out of the equation, then God can be all He can be. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, let me stop preaching again. But no, yeah, no, I, I, that's I, yeah, great. Yeah. That that preparation time that you're talking about, like you know, when you're waiting and the Lord mm -hmm. is using. I think a lot of times that's the Lord giving us the opportunity. Right. Yeah. He's preparing us for something. Yeah. It just seems like an eternity I while know, you're going I through. I know, I know, I know. And I believe the delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. Just because stuff is delayed, uh, like y'all was talking about earlier, amen, that fourth quarter is so important. Yeah. It's not quitting time. It's, it's not time to quit. It's time to believe even more, mm. even though you can't see anything. Mm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, everything not seen. That's right. So you're not going to see what God's going to do in the end. Mm. But the Bible says he's the author and the finisher. Yeah. And if he's got it in his hands, I'm not worried about a thing. You know, <laughs> I trust him. Amen. I hey, trust that's him. the way to be, right? I mean, yeah. let's face it. That is the faith. That's why they call it faith. Yeah, that's it. That's right? It. That's it. That's why they call it faith. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Tell us a little bit about So, by the way, if someone wanted to get copies of your books, mm -hmm. same thing, go to your... Yeah, the, um, my, my site, uh, Pastor Frank Allen, um, 66 at gmail.com, or you can go through the um, Facebook or uh, Instagram. They're all over the place. I got them, Barnes & Nobles, um, Books A Million. Yeah, they're online, you can buy them too. You can get them clear. e so, so as long as they know your name, yeah, they can get Frank to Allen, you. Yeah, Frank um, Allen, yeah. Um, these books are the two, it's what I use to buy food for the children and for the homeless programs that I have. The books, all the proceeds go towards that. Isn't that wonderful? That's not what I planned. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what I planned. That's what God planned, you know? And I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. Of, co of course it does. This is the will of the Father that you mm. feed the sheep. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, once again, I'm just blown away. When I hear myself talk about what God is doing right now, it, it's amazing to me, you know? Yeah. Um, the book, uh, uh, I Think Myself Happy, the second book. The book is just, think about it like this. Positive thinking right now is everything. Mm. You got to think positive even though things aren't going right. You got to think positive when things seem really, really, really bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, even, even, even the scripture says, think on these things. Whatever serves is good report, whatever serves is good, think on those things. Mm. We have to do like Paul said. Paul told King Agrippa, 
Well, King Griffith told Paul, he said, I'm almost persuaded to be a Christian. You know what I'm saying? And then Paul said, I think myself happy. That's where the title of the book comes from. Oh, a quote nice. from pa Apostle Paul, I think myself happy. I think we today should do that mm. with the knowledge of God. Paul, I tell you what, I, I don't think anything is truer than what you just said because I know for all of us, right, when things are going on, if you get yeah. negative, I don't, even if things aren't going yeah. crazy, yeah. but if you yeah. get negative, yeah. boy, it's funny how the, I think the devil, he's got no authority over yeah. us. Yeah. He's got, he's a fallen yeah. angel. He's a punk. He has right. no authority. <laughs> right. But boy, he can be a pest. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. And if he sees us with a, yeah. with a negative yeah. attitude, yeah. he will just blister That's us right. from the outside. That's right. I agree. And, 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 and one thing leads to another, leads to another before you know we're even lower. And I think what you're saying is that you find positives every day, you reach goals, you set goals positive, you think about things positive, right, right. and the Lord will guide you through. Right, right. Yeah. On the way over here, I was, I was in McDonald's, and I was talking to this guy, and he said, um, um, well, I was talking to somebody else, he kind of butted in. <laughs> He's like, um, can you give me a word? Ah. And, and, and it, this quickest day, Isaiah 43, 18, 19, you know, uh, it says, remember not the form of things, neither consider the things of old. It says, behold, God is getting ready to do a new thing. Mm. He says, shall you not see it? Are you blind? <laughs> God is getting ready to set some stuff up. Like in this fourth quarter, like y'all was talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah. It's the fourth quarter. So guess what? He's about to blow some people's mind. I think 222, two, two, signs, miracles, or wonders. Daryl's age, 22. <laughs> <laughs> signs, miracles, and wonders. God's about to blow our mind in the body of Christ. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's the whole coupling, too, into yeah. be positive, right? Yeah, yeah, Because even like you said, if things aren't the way you'd like to see them right now, mm -hmm. you just blink and the Lord's going to have something big on your doorstep. That's it. Which is also this whole thing about I've got you and mm -hmm. you need to trust me, right? Yeah, I like Lord, that. Right? The Lord's saying, look, stay with me. Yeah. I got it. Don't, yeah. don't you doubt for a second. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Man, you know how I think about the scripture says a thousand shall probably my right side and 10,000 on my left, but nothing will come nigh to me. Like a lot of us right now, look at us. We've made it, man. All this stuff has happened. People have passed away and things have happened, but you're still standing. You're still strong. You're still, you know, got your might. You know, people say, well, so-and-so passed away and then I lost this job and I went through this divorce and that happened. That, But you still live in. <laughs> rejoice. And I would like to say this too. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. In it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good perspective. Yeah. And you're still standing because yeah. the Lord has a plan for you. Yeah. You're not done here. Not done. You're not done. And any minute, it's going to be an unbelievable oh, God. blessing from the Lord Jesus that's right. Christ. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. This journey here, I tell you, I tell you, we all got an expiration date. That's right. Nobody knows when it is. Can I tell you something? Go as hard as you can. Mm. Like there is no tomorrow. And yeah. I promise you, your life will unfold before your very eyes. Mm. I'm telling you, God knows the plan he has for us to prosper us and give us an expected end. So we know what God is doing. We just don't trust that, you know, that what God is doing. It's time we trust him. Like you were saying earlier, mm. it's time we trust God. I think that's beautiful. I think that's helpful to all of us because, you know, when we think about things, we, as humans, there's a lot of processing that goes on in our brain. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it is just logic. I mean, not just logic. It's logic. It's what we know. It's what we, but what you're saying is, no, you just have to understand there is a whole lot more out here. Right. You've got to be sure you don't right. miss it. Because right. if you're over wandering, thinking about this, dwelling on this, that, you'll miss the main course. It'd be like, wow. oh, if you had an appetizer, you wow. thought that was the whole <laughs> that meal. That was it. That's it. It wasn't the whole meal. That's right. There's more. Man, that's good. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's very healthy to have the conversation tonight, because I know there's people hurting tonight. Mm -hmm. There's people that are dealing with things tonight. Right. And, you know, your message is a positive message, is a message of hope. Yeah. It's a message that says, listen, you know, you don't have to go feed the homeless. You could be part of this. Yeah. Um, if you just want to contact us, we'll pray with you, yeah, that's uh, it. Wh whatever. And I think that's, you know, do not get down. Right. Get up that's and it. make this a big, big, big quarter going That's into 2022. That's it. Mm. I agree. I got to tell you, man, it is so great having you as part of tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Wow. So uh, I told you it was a great show, and we are so blessed to, to, uh, to bring you some more great music. Um, Daryl Fletcher, Jr., who's, who's already sang a couple more, 
He's got, he's got at least another one in him. Then we're going to take a few minutes and talk with him. But uh, he's going to sing the Holy Spirit now. So, Daryl, you're up. Once again, wherever you're watching, I challenge you to just lift your hands and open up to God. Let's, let's worship him. But not only let's worship him, let's welcome him. Because when there's two or three, he's there. So I just challenge you. Say, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in here. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living home. Your presence. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, undone, undone. your presence, Lord. So we sing, Holy Spirit. Yes. 
himself. You have to let him know that he can reside in your heart. Come on, say, Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody just worship him. Come on, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. This isn't just a show, but we want you to move on the inside of us. Woo! Come on, sing, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is such, such, such a blessing. Thank, thank you for you, being thank here you, tonight. Thank you, thank you. So make sure I got this right. Turn your life to Christ at 11. Yes, sir. Realize that, oh, not only uh, is there something here with the Lord, but he's calling me to sing. Yes, sir. You fast forward now, you've got your, your, uh, your bachelor's in uh, communication. I'm now you're getting that in May. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm, I mean, you're, you're ready to go at a moment's notice out to, to sing at churches. Yes, you're, sir. You're a, you have a beautiful voice. You have Thank a beautiful you. spirit. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's by the grace of God, isn't it? Yeah, you have no idea. It's, it's truly by the grace of God. That's why it's so easy for me to just get up here and act a fool and just, you know, just be crazy for him because he has been so gracious to me. Um, the fact that I'm here. Uh, it's a blessing and it's a miracle and so I'm just grateful to God that you know he saw me he chose me and he called me and he gave me this opportunity to be with you all here well I I know that uh, having a Christian music ministry that goes out to prisons and shelters yes, I mean I can appreciate you know when you have someone who's connected with the Lord you're a composer you're a, I mean you've got uh, you, you write you sing yes, and and uh I mean, I, I just know that it's a gift. You have a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's beautiful is that you want to share it. You yes. want to use your life for one main purpose, and that's the glorification of Jesus Christ. Amen. True? Yes, sir. That is 100% <laughs> true. So, hey, just for the little bit of time we have together, I know there's people tonight that are saying, I want to get in touch with Daryl. I want to get some music from Daryl. I, I want a dialogue. What's the best way for people to do that? Where are we? Listen, the best way to get in contact with me, you can follow me on all social media platforms. I am Daryl Fletcher Jr. That's I am D-A-R-Y-L, one R. That's the best way, Fletcher Jr. <laughs> and, you know, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can even search me on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook. Listen, I just want to share a message of God's love to you, whether it be through preaching, singing, music, playing, it doesn't matter. I just hope you're ready to receive what God has. Mm, awesome. And you'll be glad to go out to churches and be part of programs or yes, services. Sir. Yes, sir. Man, that is awesome. I, I think that uh, that the Lord's anointing, and and and, and you you are so transparent with, with your love for Jesus Christ. It's it's it's, it's the first when I yeah. first met you, it's like boy I could tell it's it's all about Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. It definitely is. I have no other choice. He loves me. And, you know, I, I don't want to talk too long, but because he loves yeah. me, I have no other choice but to love him back. The fact that he gave us a choice, you know, he died for us knowing that, you know, we may not even love him back, but because I saw how much he loves me. Um, that's why I always tell everybody I meet, God loves you, I love you. That's all that matters. No, because he loved me so much, I can't help but love him back. And then I can't help but share his love because that's what we have to do. That's why we're put on this earth to be Christ. And God is love. So if he's love, we have to become love and share it. And that is the message. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. And what a great message. I mean, we need the hope of Jesus Christ right now. Yes, and, sir. Yes. And, and by the way, it ends perfectly when we have that love of Jesus Christ. The, those words, job well done. That's what we want to hear. And what you're describing really helps foster and fortify that destination. Yes, sir. Yes, 
Sure. Mm. It's, 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 it's the main goal. It's the main goal. So if I just be like him while I'm on earth, um, I already, and then I give my life to him, you know, I give my life to Christ, and then I live for him, I know that I'm going to be hearing job well done because I just love God, and I just know that if I do what he's called me to do, and which is win souls to Christ, however, doesn't matter what platform, just win souls to Christ, that's what we're here for. I got to tell you, that's beautiful, and it's been so great having you being part of the Thank program. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here tonight. Wow. So with that said, I mean, uh, we pray that tonight you, uh, that, that you really understand that it's really about one thing, the main thing, Jesus Christ. He loves us more than anything else. He wants us to have a, an incredible walk with him. And as you heard from Daryl tonight and the other guests, I mean, as we prepare ourselves to just keep focused on Christ, the love of Christ, he will shine through. Amen, amen, and amen. Blessings. Blessings.